with the white cars are. Exactly. You spoke to them about this? Yeah. They know? They know. They allow this. Wow. Oh, hello, Leila. Hello, how are you? Hi. When I saw your schedule, I was like, how are you going to do it? I mean, superpowers. It's not the, you know what? The schedule's okay. It's just the flying between. First of all, this is a love-based movement. So we, we are love-based towards, the, obviously, the animals, towards the workers, towards the drivers towards everyone here. So it's the first time that we're going to be stopping trucks. Anyone, <laughs> anyone have tissues? No one? <laughs> we'll exchange hugs for tissues. Look at all the That's tissues in the world. Thank you. There's a fire inside your heart. And let it light up the world. Light up the world. Here we are out the front of another slaughterhouse in Zurich, Switzerland. We have about 100 activists here. Nearly 50% of them, this is their first vigil. Amazing, but today should be a very important day for these activists and a very sad day for these animals. So the reason there's so many activists here for the vigil and it's so early is because a lot of them have work. So they're coming here before work to bear witness and be a part of this, which is really amazing when you think about it. Pull the windows down. Can we pull the shields down? There's cows in here. I think there's cows in here, but... The calves. Yeah, they're really young. A few months old, I think, maybe. Hey, darling. Oh my God. They're really young. A few months old, I think. The poor babies. Okay, I'm gonna get down now. Who hasn't seen? Who hasn't seen? You wanna see? They could be a, a couple of months old, maybe. They're in there. Calves. It's a very bizarre, um, disturbing thing to raise someone, show them love, feed them and care for them then drop them off at this place here so they can be butchered and you can eat their remains. So it's such deep conditioning. Hello, darling. Hello, guys. It's fo they're fogging up the um, lens because they're so cold and... There we go. Hey, baby girl. Oh, darling. Every single one of these I go to, I just... It, I always feel the same level of disbelief that in the truck those animals have no real idea what they're about to walk into over there. Blood, struggle, a knife in the throat, bullet in the head, well, I just can't get over it. Can you see anyone in there? Yeah. I'm trying to suckle on my fingers. They're only babies. It's like a big prison truck. Peeping outside the holes, they don't really know what's going to happen to them. Oh my god. I think those windows there are the windows into the... into hell. The fog on the windows of the warm blood fogging up the slaughterhouse. You can imagine dumping blood on the ground. It, like blood's at 30 degrees. Calves as well, like little dairy calves. A few months old trying to suckle on your fingers and they're going in here. They get showed no mercy in there. No mercy, they're just, it's just the production line. The slaughterhouse workers are desensitized, stabbing animals all day. The animals have no hope in that place. The only hope they have are out here, in the activists. This is what I'm talking about when I say how sadistic these places are. This is a statue of a cow, painted like a clown, advertised out the front of a murder facility. But look, eyeliner, like, they're murdering them in there. This is like a scene out of a really weird horror movie, like a clockwork orange or something. 
Look, they've like painted underwear on the cow and it's got like these stiletto shoes on and like like a weird stripper. And it says cowgirl. Parading these animals around, making little statues, painting them up like clowns, murdering them against their will in their baby animals. Totally reminds you of a, like a prison truck, eh? Like something out of our switch. Very high tops. They do the high tops for a reason. They don't want the public to see the living cargo. It's just smarter for them to keep these windows really high up here. It's a poor angel look. The rolling in, the holocaust goes on. The smell in there would be just it's disgusting. It smells of death in the slaughterhouse. Pigs are, pigs are highly anxious animals. So for the, they, to, to stun and stab pigs is a grueling process. I mean, the pigs are struggling. They're really desperate. Cows are more gentle, majestic, slower moving animals. Easier to target. Human beings take advantage of that. It's really unfair, Anna. This is your first time to bear witness? Yeah. Okay, well, how do you feel now? Do you feel? Uh, well, um, kind of emotional and vulnerable. Yeah, emotional. When you see the animals go back in there, does it make you feel like? I want to cry. Yeah, it's also a, a not understanding yeah. the whole um, system. It's a disbelief. Yeah, of the unnecessary suffering. I just, I'm so surprised. No matter how many slaughterhouses I go to, I just am absolutely stunned and amazed at how this is actually legal and normalised and defended by a large group of society, a large percentage of society. It's a normal job, butchering slaves. Do you think this will motivate you as an activist? Oh yeah, yeah. I think it changes us in a profound way. It gives us um, strength to speak for them because we realise that we're not the victims, they're the victims and we have to be strong for them and we're their only hope sort of thing. This is the dictionary definition of a holocaust. It says a lot about a society as to how we treat the most innocent, vulnerable, defenceless. They can't defend themselves, basically. Animals can't, these animals cannot defend themselves. Human beings are, you know, capitalising on their vulnerability. One truck goes in, another one comes out empty. Apparently they're a service, so like you drop your animals off here to be slaughtered. Yeah, he's just bu buying his flesh wholesale to, to deliver to stores and restaurants. Probably still warm, like I still feel the same now as I did at my first vigil. It doesn't get any easier. If anything, it actually gets harder. The more vigils you do. Yeah, it gets harder because um, it's still happening a year later. You know. Yeah, and when you first see it, you're like, I'm going to do something to stop this. And then you start, you know, working hard. And then a year later, there's still 20 trucks coming in on one slaughterhouse in one side of the earth, you know, filled with animals. And then you go to the other side of the earth. It's another slaughterhouse with 20 trucks full of animals. You know, millions of chickens being slaughtered at one slaughterhouse every year. You know, it's just never ending. So that's, that's why it gets harder. What keeps you going? You, well, you just keep going because you have to. I mean, even if there was no chance of stopping it, you would still keep going, but yeah, we have an unwavering belief that this will, this will end. Vegans come here to bear witness for the first time and they are never the same afterwards. They never look at animals the same, they never look at flesh the same. I think even vegans can be disconnected from the victims and what's the reality of it. But also like, these industries rely on secrecy. They rely on covering 
the faces and personalities of the individuals in the trucks. You take a vegan here, they're an activist for the rest of their life. A lot of them are they're moved by it. He doesn't want to stop. He's going a little bit fast. If there's someone in the back there, he just went a little bit too fast up that bump. Imagine turning human beings into sausages and driving them around in the truck, dropping them off into restaurants, like children or something, you know? Well, I don't think there's any moral difference. I honestly think it's morally on par with mincing up children alive and, or um, shooting children in the head and killing them and turning them into steak. The only difference is species, not sentience and, you know, inherent value. More sentience. There's less sentience in some humans. You think there's more sentience in a, a human baby than there is in a human adult? Yeah, we wouldn't murder human babies, so I don't see the moral difference in murdering children and murdering animals. But we would never murder our own less sentient humans or less intelligent humans. It's just complete hypocrisy, a massive double standard. Really easy to point out. Here's another truck here. Those poor animals just fogging up my lens and breathing and they're sentient beings, you know, they're, they're not burgers, they're not bits of meat, they're scared, curious, wondering where they're going, it's, they're just exactly like dogs in every way, There's the, except for the way they look, just, you can just see in their eyes how young they are, and they're going in there like a captive bolt pistol in the skull. It's such an injustice, it's such an injustice on every level. Oh. People are so disconnected from the sentient life that struggled for their last breath in a slaughterhouse so they can have their burger. It's murder, man. You don't want to feel helpless. It's so inspiring. That is not good for the animal. So, yeah, murdering humans, murdering animals, I don't see the moral difference. If anyone wants to debate me on the moral difference, we can talk about that, but I don't see a moral difference.